How long are you going to wait until you finally start doing carnivore consistently? Hey, what's shaking bacon? My name's Bruno Panucci. I hope you're doing well. So a lot of people have gotten turned on to the carnivore diet, not just for weight loss, but because it helps them to feel good. So before we get into this video too much, I really appreciate it. If you'd like, comment, and subscribe to the channel, it really helps support doing what I'm doing. So to the topic at hand, why is it that you're not consistent with carnivore? And by consistent, I mean being a strict carnivore every day and not having anything off of a carnivore diet. Now, some people it's like holding your breath underwater because you're kind of viewing it as maybe a diet or you're dealing with the addiction of carbohydrates and sugar. So at that point, that's another problem. Think about that. We're dealing with an addiction and you have to change your mindset with carnivore. And that addiction is what's preventing you from being consistent with carnivore. So maybe it's because of that addiction that you can't afford to have a bite of something off of a carnivore diet because you can't control the volume of the food that you're gonna eat or you can't control the frequency and you keep going on and off a carnivore diet. I did this myself for years. Since 2018, I was starting to play around with the carnivore diet and I had a hard time staying consistent with the carnivore diet after that. And it took me a few years before I learned to be consistent with it. And even though I had a serious health problem like a heart disease that I was dealing with and lots of other health problems, my addiction was overriding my common sense. Because let's stop and think about this. If you have some health problems that you can correct through diet, Common sense dictates that you stop immediately what's causing that pain or that problem and you start doing something that's going to help alleviate that pain or problem. And when you have trouble stopping what's causing that problem, in this case it's your diet that's causing systemic inflammation, that's causing whatever health problems you might be dealing with and you have trouble breaking up with that, we're dealing with an addiction, most likely. Now, there's other ways to define this, of course, but you have to accept the fact that you're not dealing with something as simple as willpower. Because if it just came down to willpower and only willpower, then it would be a simple thing to fix, and it's just a matter of willpower that's keeping people addicted. Willpower is a component of dealing with an addiction, but it's not the whole way to deal with an addiction. You need support, you need to understand and educate yourself on what you're dealing with when it comes to having an addiction. You need support and you need knowledge, and then the willpower will come the better empowered you are to deal with the problem. I learned that I had to deal with my addiction by giving into it. I had to accept the fact that my addiction was worse than I ever realized, and it took me till I was binging solid for a few months before I realized how bad it was. The harder I tried to quit, the worse it was getting, and I couldn't believe it. I put on a lot of weight in a short amount of time, and I eventually got to the point where I stopped and went, what am I doing, right? And I had a trigger that made me binge like that. But for other people, it could have been alcohol or smoking, whatever the problem was that they were dealing with, they had to learn to just accept the fact that they didn't have control over it. And once I accepted that fact, I learned, you know what, this is bigger than me and I need to just stop doing what I'm doing. And I had sort of an epiphany, like an out of body experience where I just had this moment where I thought, this is leading nowhere good. I have no control. I can't afford to have carbohydrates once a day or once a week or just give myself treat days ever. I don't care what the occasion is. I can't afford to have something at any point, any time of the day because I'll fall off the wagon. And I think a lot of people out there can relate to that. When you go off carnivore, you go off carnivore. Now, if you're a moderator, it probably doesn't apply to you. You can have a little bit here or there and it doesn't bother you and you don't crave it. And you can have literally a bite or two and be fine and move Move on with your day and you don't feel like you fell off the wagon and it's a different mentality most people can't do that with carbohydrates but the ones that can bravo because that means you're a moderator and you're in a good spot and you can mainly do carnivore but you don't need to do carnivore you're just doing it and doing it 98 or 99 percent of your meals of all the food that's going in your mouth you can manage it but for those people that are trying and they find that they have to abstain it's a whole other world. But when are you going to get on track? When are you going to get to the point where you can do a carnivore diet consistently? Because once you do it consistently, that's when you start getting all the health benefits, all the health benefits. But regardless, the difficulty is accepting the fact that this consistency is an issue. And we have to wake up to the idea that we've been struggling and we're kind of banging our head off the wall because we can't stay consistent with this carnivore diet. And you need that moment sometimes when you've been trying it over and over again. And before you know it, months have gone by and maybe years have gone by and you haven't been able to sharpen up your diet. You'll figure out what your balance is on a carnivore diet. Maybe you'll be able to have dairy. Maybe you'll be able to have coffee still. Maybe you'll be able to have certain foods, but temporarily you might have to cut some of that stuff out 
while you're breaking up with carbohydrates because dairy will keep the cravings alive. But in the beginning, maybe it's not such a bad thing to have because it's allowing you to stick with a carnivore diet. I did that. I had lots of dairy in the beginning when I was trying to be strict with the carnivore diet because it made it easier, made the process easier, and I was able to do it and stick with the carnivore diet. And then after a while, I decided to deal with those cravings and get rid of dairy for the most part because a little cheese goes a long way for me. I can have the odd little slice of cheese and I'll be okay. Cheese for me is a slippery slope. I can have a small slice or two and that's okay, but typically if you're making a meal of cheese and you're sitting down and you're having a bunch of cheese, well, maybe that's an issue. I recommend when you're trying to do carnivore, get rid of intermittent fasting. Stop punishing yourself with starvation of any kind, whether you call it intermittent fasting or you're just trying to clean up your diet and hit a reset button on carnivore by not eating anything for a day or three or four days to clear out your digestive system, don't do that. You're just torturing yourself. I highly recommend staying comfortably full all day long on a carnivore diet with enough fat that you feel satiated. And then after you get this binging protocol out of your body, out of your mind, where you have to eat and just stuff yourself on whatever you're eating, even if it's carnivore food, once that's better managed, maybe then you can start managing windows of time without eating, whether it's a morning or afternoon or a full day or a few days. That's a different place. But in the beginning, you're setting yourself up for a difficult challenge when you start punishing yourself or thinking that you're rewarding yourself by not eating for a window of time when you have a food addiction. Don't set yourself up for disaster. You have to make this transition as realistic as possible. It's a really difficult moment to wake up to the point where you realize I've been goofing around with this for too long and it's time I get consistent because my health problems are still here and I've been trying to be consistent with this for two months or two years or maybe six or seven years and you've never been able to be as consistent as you wanted and therefore you're not getting all the health benefits that comes along with a carnivore diet or maybe you found your sweet spot with carnivore and you can have some of these foods and you're okay with it and that's good but if you're trying to do this for health the one thing you have to do is change your mindset and you might have to wake up to the fact that what you've been doing isn't working as well as you wanted it to or that you think it's helping because your numbers when you get your blood work done is showing some of these health problems you have are still there and they might be serious health problems depending on your age and how far gone these health problems are. So I still have high fasting insulin. I'm hopefully gonna be getting that checked in the next week or two and I shouldn't have that after this long on a strict carnivore diet. So there's something else going on under the skin that is preventing me from losing weight as efficiently as I could. So what's gonna help that? Well, I'm at a point where I can play around with different things like intermittent fasting and high fat, low fat, because I have more metabolic flexibility than I had two and a half to three years ago or even four years ago. But I'm not at a point where I'm like a Kelly Hogan where things just bounce off me like I'm a speeding train going down the tracks and everything just deflects off me no matter what I throw up my diet because my metabolic system is doing so well. There's lots of different things you can do once you're at that point and you're almost bulletproof. You can handle a lot of different things, big meals, small meals, high fat, low fat. You but when it comes to your health, you just get to a point in life where you can't fool around with it anymore and you have to be strict about it. And yes, you're going to have to go without some of these foods. You're going to have to accept the fact that it's Christmas or your birthday or a family get together. And there's no reason why you should have any of that food because you've been goofing around with your diet for far too long, decades most likely, and you just can't afford to compromise, not even on those special occasions. Start wrapping your mind around that. Your diet doesn't care that it's Christmas. Your diet doesn't care that it's New Year's Eve. Your diet doesn't care that it's only one beer a week because it affects you negatively. And you don't wanna affect your body negatively because you've gotten to the point where your quality of life is more important than the food you're putting in your mouth. So keep that in mind. And I'm not trying to sound judgmental when I do this, but I am trying to help anyone out there who's dealing with this addiction and they can't stay on the ride. And being on the roller coaster is not a safe place to be. We don't wanna be going all up and down these hills and doing loops with our diet. We want stability. We're at a point in life, especially if you're in your 40s, 50s, or 60s, you want stability in life. And stability starts first with you.